Thomas Markle has branded his daughter Meghan Markle a liar and insists that the Duchess of Sussex has been lying for years. Well, in a recent interview on GB News, Thomas Markle said it was unforgivable that Harry and Meghan were attacking the world and Harry's 95-year-old grandmother. And as Meghan's father, he claims that her lies are so obvious and that he's no idea why she's saying them. So in this video, I'm touching on the alleged lies told by both Harry and Meghan, but more importantly, stick around because I'm looking at the possible motives behind their need to lie. If you're new to my channel, I'm Sue Blackhurst, and it's a pleasure to have you join me. Now, if you want to jump straight to the main content, then do go to the timestamp down here, as I just need to give a little bit of an update to my regular viewers, because I've been locked in a Spanish hotel room for the past, well, eight days now, actually, um, as my daughter tested positive the day before we were due to fly home. Well, I just wanted to say a massive, huge thank you to all of you who have made so many lovely comments of support for my daughter and myself. I know so many people that have related, you know, these horror stories of quarantine in these, you know, hospital isolation hotels. But I have to be honest, because we've actually had quite a good time. And um, I wouldn't say we've had the best time, but what I would say is that we have definitely made the best of what could be a bad situation. Um, I can't deny that when the test results first came back from the daughter, you know, this sort of the fit to fly test, you have it done the day before you go home my heart did sink and I did have all those emotions that you know my daughter couldn't go home she was here with her friends um, and of course I wanted to make sure they got home safely but as I've said on previous videos and I did remind my daughter of this it's not what happens to you but how you deal with it that matters so she got the results we came straight back to the hotel room we unpacked our essentials I cleaned the room thoroughly and we looked at it as you know a bonus 10 days we flew out, oh gosh, it was initially for a week, and today is day eight of quarantine. And that today is actually quite a strange feeling because we've now been in quarantine longer than we were actually here on holiday. We've got two more days to go quarantine, and I am gonna make a video, by the way, of um, what it's been like, and also trying to help other people get the same level of support and help that we've had. It's going to be a one-off video, so for all my regular viewers, don't watch it and then start unsubscribing, thinking that's the direction I'm going in. No, it's a one-off video. Um, because what I wanted to say is, you know, our insurance company, so hello, Joanne, if you're watching, because I've been emailing Joanne, she's been phoning me and she's been outstanding. Um, our tour operator, which is jet2.com. So hello, Tony, because Tony's been ringing me on a daily basis. And the hotel staff have all been absolutely incredible at helping us make our 10 days in quarantine as comfortable as possible. Um, so we now have to get our final tests in another two days before we get that fit to fly certificate. Um, so hopefully we'll have that video up very soon. But until then, let's find out a little bit more about our favorites, Harry and Meghan. Well, what a slap in the face for Thomas Markle, because whatever he did or did not do, the bottom line is the fact that his own daughter condemned him and turned her back on him for, you know, talking to the press. And for her then to proceed to do exactly what she told him not to do, she revealed all on a television show, it must have been the biggest kick for him and a bit of an insult, I think, to be honest. Because Thomas Markle has said that Harry and Meghan's attacks on the world and Harry's 95-year-old grandmother are unforgivable. And I think it's really sad that as her father, he also believes that his daughter's lies are so obvious, but he doesn't yet know the reason why she's saying them. Now, I think most of us would agree, you know, whilst we all want to think of ourselves as being, you know, extremely upstanding and honest citizens, we are all guilty of telling lies. In fact, statistically speaking, research estimates that the average person tells, you know, I think it's a minimum of one to two lies per day. So if you don't agree with that, here you go. Ask yourself, have you ever told somebody that their, let's say their new hairstyle is great when actually you preferred their old style? Or maybe you give a compliment to somebody who's made you, you know, that bad meal because you didn't want to upset them. Or even when someone's asked how you are, you replied, I'm fine, all is great, when actually all you wanted to do was curl up and cry. 
Well, these were classed as you know normal lives, and they're ones we do in order to, let's say, prevent hurt or harm to another person. But there is something else, because on the other hand, we have something called prolific lies. And these are the ones that we all need to watch out for, because these people who tell prolific lies tell, I think it's a minimum of, say, five or six lies per day. But these lies are less likely to be told out of concern for other people, and they're more likely for their own self-interest. When it comes to, I think we'll call it the Sussex screenplay, Thomas Markle isn't the only person to question, you know, the validity of what we have been told in the past. And following that infamous Oprah interview, saying what so many people felt, Piers Morgan quit his job and he blasted what he called, you know, I think it was a delusional duchess, for what he said were 17 untrue, exaggerated or unprovable slurs against the royal family. Well, I don't think that we are able to accuse Harry or Meghan of pathological or compulsive lying. But when I think about it, what I do feel is that they, you know, they've almost got so accustomed to relating their perception of events that they have, in fact, begun to believe that their version is the only truth. So what I wanted to look at are the reasons why they, or other people for that matter, feel the need to, let's say, share untruths. When we're under pressure, our thinking about the big picture can be challenged, making our memories of things quite unreliable. You see, our memories are influenced by so many things, all of which can easily change over time. And each time we try to look back and think of them, these memories are essentially reconstructed into, let's say, a more distorted recollection. Look at it this way. People think that our recollections are like a video recording of events, when in fact our memories are more like completing a jigsaw puzzle, but with only 50% of the pieces. We're able to formulate an idea of that picture, but vital areas will always be missing. But what's interesting here is that in the same context, somebody else can have the other 50% of the pieces, meaning that you can both be looking at the same image, but seeing something very, very different. But the danger here lies when our brains want to fill in these missing pieces. So when asked to recall the final image, what we end up doing is recalling what we think we know to be true. Now, you could argue that this isn't an actual lie because the person isn't trying to intentionally mislead others. But what happens with repetitive liars is they become so skillful at filling in these remaining blanks that they actively seek out what they want the missing pieces to be in order that they create the picture that they want to be the truth. So essentially, what this means is that when they say something, they genuinely believe at that moment in time that it is the truth, and they almost create a complete alternative world in their head, one that confirms to their moment-by-moment -moment beliefs and needs. So purely as an example, Harry may have relayed a totally innocent conversation discussing the colour of Archie's skin. It happens to many families out there who have got parents of different heritage. But then Meghan fills in the missing pieces in order to justify her claim that the royal family are racists. These lies are generated in the hope that they can make something come true by saying it over and over again, and by believing it as hard as they can. So, in other words, the person says what they actually want to be the truth. But people also tell lies because they're trying to control a situation or a person in order to exert some form of influence towards getting the decisions or reactions that they want. So very often the truth can be, let's say, inconvenient because it might not confirm the narrative that they actually desire. Now, it's in these situations where people often worry that they won't be respected if the truth doesn't put them in the best light. So instead of remaining silent or, you know, let's say irrelevant, they create a narrative to gain the recognition or attention that they feel that they deserve. So again, purely as an example, if Megan is receiving negative press, discussing how she felt abandoned by the royal family would be a very good way of encouraging the public to give her more attention and sympathy. In an ideal world, of course, we're all striving for this damage limitation. Protection and survival, after all, are natural instincts. So to protect yourself and those close to you from being you know, harmed is another motive to lie. 
Now, whether it's themselves or someone that they love who is in trouble, we not only want to stand by them, we create a narrative that justifies both our own and their actions. So when it comes to who made Hugh cry, William is of course going to defend Catherine and Harry of course is going to defend Meghan. This is why these two brothers are both keeping silent on this aspect because one of them knows that they would have to lie in order to protect their wife. Well, people who tell lie after lie are of course going to be worried that the truth might lead others to reject or even shame them. Well, I now worry because for Harry and Meghan, I feel that there are now so many inconsistencies that it means that they may have to use Harry's book to cover up one lie with another. And of course, with another even greater lie. I know that the wise amongst us all know that when you lie or act dishonestly, you are in fact initiating problems and this domino structure of complications, which eventually will run out of control. And as Walter Scott said in 1808, oh, what a tangled web we weave when first we practice to deceive. Well, I've been so lucky about to have been out here as I've also been able to carry on with my Find Your Confidence egg week training program. Now, they're all so amazing, these ladies, because they actually asked me, knowing what the situation was with quarantine, if I wanted to postpone to next week. But the truth is, I was actually so excited to talk to somebody else. And um, I suspect it's the same level of excitement you have when you get visiting time in prison. I don't know. Although they have the bonus of being able to go out and exercise. But then again, they don't get to eat breakfast out on the balcony. Anyway, I think I'm the winner there. But well, I did have one gorgeous lady and it was her first week on the programme. So I especially didn't want to postpone it for her. And I really wish I could have recorded her closing comments because she was so excited saying that she had already learned so much that we could end the programme today and she already felt so much better. I wish I could just bottle the level of excitement and change that I see. So if you're interested in joining me on my waiting list, which is now still about six weeks down the line, just email me with the words, I want to find my confidence to sue at sueblackhurst.com. And if I will make the promise now at the end of week one, you don't start to feel the immediate benefits, I will give you your money back. Thank you so much again for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already subscribed and hit that notification bell. And of course, please do like, comment and share this video if you can. Do take care and I will see you all next time.